Whenever you have a collection of objects, you might want to save them to a file, and there's a lot of reasons for that. You might want to work with them later. Um, you might want to share them with another user or administrator. You might want to uh, bring them in later and do more things with them. You might want to archive them. You might want to email them to someone else. There's a lot of reasons to export them into a file. And of course, exporting implies that at some point you're later going to import them. Here's some examples of when exporting might make sense. Um, perhaps you've got some event log entries and you want to export them for long-term storage. Archiving. Uh, you might have some processes that are supposed to be running on a server at 3 in the morning, way before you're awake. So you want to export those to a file so that when you are awake and you do come into the office, you can see what was happening at 3 in the morning. You may want to export your command line history, share it with another administrator. You might want to export services and use that as a baseline so that later on you can audit your servers and see who has deviated from the baseline. So here's how to do it. Use the export CLI XML commandlet. That's the best. It's the most robust format, and it's going to let you import those objects later with the most fidelity. You also have the option of using export CSV. Um, it's okay. It adds a type identifier right at the top, so you can import the objects and reconstruct them later. So you get whatever objects you want, pipe it to one of these two commandlets, give them a file name, and the result is you have all your objects serialized or exported into a file. Let's see an example. This is easy. I'm simply going to use get process to get all of the running processes and then pipe them to export CLI XML to save them in a file. We'll use this file in a minute, but remember that it's a snapshot of the processes running on my computer right now. So your objects are in a file and later on you can import them. And obviously you're going to need to import them using the same technique you used to export them. So import CLI XML or import CSV. That imports the files and reconstructs the objects. You can pipe those reconstructed objects into really just about anything. You can use them just like they were real objects, only they're a snapshot of whenever and whatever you exported. You can even save them into a variable for a number of different uses. One use is comparing those objects, and this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier with exporting services into a file as a baseline of what a server should have running, and then later looking at what the server is actually running and comparing those two. So you're going to use the compare object commandlet to do this. Its alias is diff, D-I-F-F. -F. You compare two collections of objects that way. And there are various parameters of compare object that allow you to tweak the comparison, but basically it's going to show you a list of what exists in one collection that doesn't exist in the other collection. Let's take a look. I'm going to start by importing the processes I exported earlier. I'll store them in a variable, dollar sign $prox, so that I can work with them. Notice that displaying the variable is just like running get process again, except that I'm looking at a snapshot, a point in time when this file was originally created. I can still treat these as objects, though. I'll pipe them to select object and format them as a table. So they work in the pipeline just as any other collection of objects. Let's start two new processes, calc and then notepad. I'll minimize each of them so we can focus on the shell, but the thing to remember is that these weren't running when we exported processes earlier. I'm going to create a new variable, now prox, and set it equal to the currently running processes. Now let's use the compare object commandlet, which has an alias of diff. I'll ask it to compare the current processes to the ones I imported. Y yikes, not what I expected. See, the problem is that compare object is trying to compare the entire object. And with processes, you've got things like their handle count, memory use, and CPU time that will continue to differ over time. I'll try again and just compare the object's name properties. Now I get a list of differences that I can use, processes which weren't running at both times. Pause this video and use your lab guide to complete the tasks in the lab. When you're finished, resume playing the video and I'll walk you through a sample solution. Let's see how you did for lab 7-1. For task 1, I'm using get service to retrieve my services and exporting them to an XML file. Then I import them back into a variable. In reality, you might be importing them the next day or something, not right away. Then I'll use compare object, or its alias, diff, to compare the imported services to the currently running services. Hopefully there will be no differences. If there are, I know that something on the server has changed and that maybe I need to look into it. 
For task two, I use getWMyObject to retrieve the Win32 service class. I filtered out everything not set to start automatically and selected the name, start name, and state properties from what was left. I exported those to a CSV file, creating a simple report of services set to start automatically, including their logon account names.